Okay. Uh, there's a new announcement today. Well, it's the old announcement, but the date has changed. The programming assignment is no longer due on the evening of the 27th, because the 27th is Climate Day. Climate, what is it called? Climate Strike. Yeah, the Climate Strike Day. And, uh, and so anyway, we're giving you an extra day to do that. However, uh, um, and you don't have to come to class if you don't want to, but I'm going to be here. Uh, uh, but if you don't come to class, that's perfectly OK, because the lecture will be recorded for, um, well, this lecture will be recorded. And also, you can go to my lecture, which is like in two hours or something like that. Or you can go to Cinda's lecture, which is in one hour. Uh, so you have a lot of choices to go to different versions of this lecture. And so, you know, do what you want. Uh, and the assignment's been extended by a day, so you can even just like you know, go crazy. <laughs> Not too crazy. Okay, any questions about that? Program assignment is due one day later. Uh, today's plan, we're going to talk about stacks and queues. Um, Stacks are last in, first out. Queues are first in, first out. Like, you know, you queue up in the bank or something like that. That's what our plan is. We're going to talk about those things today. OK. We had reached a point last time where we had understood how to implement stacks by uh, using uh, a linked list representation. But the alternative and perhaps better way to do it, though I, I don't know, I like linked lists, is uh, as an array. So this is an array implementation of a stack. Here, there is one um, parameter called top, which is an index, which is indexing the next free position in the array to be used to stash the next thing you push. So top here is 5. And that's done so that, uh, well, like for example, if I wanted to check for is full, the check for is full would be, I want to check to see whether I've filled up the array with stuff. The array has size, size. What would be the check? Is full is, this is like a little test, just to make sure everybody's on the same page. Maybe you don't, maybe I haven't pointed out how this works. As you put more things in, the top moves over to the right one by one as you push things in. So top is incrementing when you add stuff. That's what's happening here. When you push stuff into the stack, you're incrementing top. And then when you pop stuff off, you're decrementing it. You decrement it, and then you return the value that's in that location s top. So if I popped at this point right now, I would decrement top from 5 to 4, and then I would return whatever's in array location 4, and that would be that return value e. So now, the question is, how do you implement is full? Lots of people now know. Lots and lots. Lots more? Okay, good. You. Top is full is the condition that top is equal to, what did you want to say? Size minus, size minus one. Just size. Unless you, I mean, you could say size minus one, it would still work. But you wouldn't use a space that you could use. Uh, okay, so when top flies off the end, top isn't ind indexing anything that's useful. Uh, top is equal to size, then the thing is full. Okay, um, great. Let's talk about runtime. What is the runtime for pop? Yes. Order one. Order one. Pop. What is the runtime for push? Order 
What a one. Whoops. That looks like a mango. What a one. Or push. Is it always order one? There's something weird that happens in this. Yeah. Yeah, there's this weird thing here, resize. And so it's order one unless resize is called. And you can imagine what resize does. Resize says, so you've been putting too many things into the stack. The stack is now full and you want to put something else into the stack. I have to make the array allocation bigger. I have to resize the array. Now, you're thinking, why don't we just use a vector rather than an array? Because we didn't. We used a vector. See? It's a vector. No, it's an array, not a vector. If I use the vector, then vectors dynamically resize. But I want to bring out the resize because I want you to understand that there is a cost to this dynamic resizing. So it's order one most of the time. Mostly. But it's not order one always. When there's a resize operation, you have to do some work. And that's what I want to talk about. But before I do, are there any questions about this? About this code? So for this particular implementation, would you make the function is full private or public? How many people would make this public? Is full should be public. Oh no, don't look over there. I'm just saying that. Excellent. Okay, how many people would make is full private? Why? Why would you make it private? All you people that raised your hand, you should have a reason for why you did that. Why do you want to make it private? Yep. It it shows some things left that you Oh, I see. Um, it shows some. So if is full was public, it would be indicating something about the inner implementation of the of the um, of the stack, and that's probably not part of a generic stack. You don't want to have the knowledge that the stack has been implemented by an array. Or maybe you do. I mean, it really depends on the use. For example, if this was a stack within some sort of limited memory device, you want to make sure it's not full then, because you don't want the limited memory device to sort of all of a sudden not be able to do anything and crash then you'd want this sort of is full as being a public, a public member um, and the allocation to maybe be static, but you would never push into something that was full. You'd say, I'm going to allocate myself one of these things at the beginning, one of these stacks that's just a particular size, and I don't want to go outside of that size. So it depends a bit on what you want, but from the point of view of a pure stack that you want to be able to push into is much as possible, then yeah, I would make it private. Um, okay, right, so now we have to talk about resize. Uh, so what happens with resize is we filled up our stack. Here we are. It's completely full. And so what we have to do is create a larger array and then copy all of the stuff from the old array into the new array and then keep going with the new sized array. So, for example, here is a new array uh, that I just made, and now I've copied all of these things from the old array into this new array, and I have some extra space at the end. So, how much time is it going to take to resize from an array of size X to an array of size Y? You have two choices. You can either say theta of x, or you could say theta of y. How many people say theta of x? How many people say theta of y? Do you know what it is, I think, nowadays? I really think it's theta of y. And do you know why? 
for security reasons. It needs to initialize memory that's given to a process. The operating system needs to initialize that memory to be blank. So if it has blank memory lying around, then that's great, and it will give it to you without doing anything. But if it doesn't, it has to wipe out that memory because it doesn't want information from one process that it's managing to leak into another process that it's managing. So for security reasons, I think it's order Y. And just because of initialization. So initialize uh, new uh, locations to zero and we'll put down these mysterious words for security. But you understand the security, right? If like somebody, if the other process was using this to store passwords, and you just said, give me a huge chunk of memory, you would just get a huge chunk of passwords. So anyway, that's at least I think what happens. So we'll stick with order y, theta of y. And so then there's a second question. Okay, so after we know how much running time is involved, the second question is, how do we resize the array? So I've written down two possibilities on this slide. One is we take the original size and we add some extra space to it. Each time you know you have an array of size 5, then I want to add 5 to it. And then if I have now an array of size 10 and I have another full, it fills up, I add 5 more to it. And then if I can... I add, I'm always adding the same amount to it to increase its size each time I'm adding five. That's one. The other one is multiply the size by some constant, like, for example, uh, two or maybe three. So you start off with something of size, let's say, two, and it fills up very quickly. And so you multiply the size by two and you get something of size four. And that fills up very quickly. But then you multiply two, four by two and you get eight. And then that fills up, and then you get 16, and then that fills up, and you get the picture, right? You know the story about the, the, the um, there was an Indian ruler in India who, uh, who uh, wanted to pay uh, uh, this uh, wise man for what he did for him. And he said, the wise man said, okay, just put one grain of rice on the first square of your chessboard, and then put two grains on the second one, and then four grains on the, and then eight grains on the third. So the guy said, that's all you want? And he said, yeah, that's all I want. And so he started doing this. And what, how many grains of rice did he put on the last square of a chessboard? Chessboards are eight by eight. Starts off as two to the zero, and two to the one, two to the two, two to the three, two to the four. Two to the 63, holy cow. Two to the 63 is big. 2 to the 63 is like about the space that you have in your laptop, which is, that's a lot of rice. Okay. That's what you do when you multiply by a constant. Multiply time, the original size times some constant. And maybe there's some other way that you would like to do it, but we're only going to talk about these two. Which one do you like better? Just let's vote. I'm in a very voting mood today. How many people like plus add 10 each time, or maybe 100. How many people like times multiply the size by factor of 2, factor of 3? It's an even split. That's very interesting. OK, well, let's see what happens. Do you think it matters? I mean, is it going to matter in the running time? When we look at the running time, is it going to matter? Yeah, yeah it's going to matter. It is going to matter. So we have to pick the right one. Here's the original size plus a constant. So this is, you know, you sit around, you push something in there, one, two, three, then it fills up. So you do the copy, and you push in four, five, six, and then that fills up. So you do the copy, and you do this copy, and you initialize the thing. Uh, each time you're adding three, and I'm assuming this is for just for to make the calculation nicer. I'm assuming the original size is C and that we increase by C each time. 
uh, this is to make the calculation uh, nice. Okay, so but we're increasing by three each time. Okay? How many, if we have perform n pushes, if I push n things into my stack, you know, after three, I trigger a resize. After six, I trigger a resize. After nine, I trigger a resize. How many resizes do I trigger if I push n things into the stack? You're right. Just You just say it. N things into the stack, three, trigger a resize. Six, trigger a resize. Nine, trigger a resize. Twelve, trigger a resize. N over three. Something like that, right? What did I write down? I wrote down something clever. N over three, N over C, whoa, hello. N over C, the ceiling of this, minus one. The number of resizes. Now when I perform a resize, the cost of that resize depends on the size, the current size. So the first time well, was when I was resizing something of size 3 to get to something of size 6. It took me 6 steps. Second time, when I went from 6 to 9, it took me 9 steps. So the i3 size costs me what? Oh, all right. C times I plus 1. Okay. The first one cost me 2 times C, 6. The second one cost me 3 times C, 9, etc. So now, this is the cost for the resize. We know how many resizes there are. What is the total amount of work we do to do all of those resizes? It's just a sum. Total cost is a sum over all of our resizes from i equals the first resize up to uh, the n over c minus 1 resize of the cost of doing the resize. And what is this? It's a function of n. I also have c, but c is some constant. It's the thing that we started off. It doesn't depend on the number of pushes. It just depends on what we've decided to be the initial size of the uh, stack. Now, it's a constant, independent of n. So as a function of n, this is some function of n. And what is it asymptotically? n squared. Yeah, it's the sum of i going up to n over c. It's going to be something like n squared over c squared, something like that. Something that's big omega of n squared. I have two questions. One, why did I write big omega? Two, is this good? Why did I write big omega? Why didn't I write big L like I normally do? Or big theta. I could write big theta. But I wrote big omega. Why did I write big omega? You remember the choice of uh, asymptotic notation that you make tells a story, the person that's reading it. What story am I telling if I tell you this is big omega of n squared? You know the definition, right? You remember the definition. So what am I telling you about? Yeah. It's a worst runtime. No, 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 not it's a worst runtime. Not it's, not, it's, not it's, a, it's not that it's a worst runtime. I could be measuring anything. I could be measuring worst case runtime. In this case, I'm, I'm measuring the amount of work that we're doing to do the the resizes, so there is some sort of runtime associated with it. It could be any function. 
and I could talk about big omega, I could say that that function is big omega of something. But when I say big omega of something, you're saying, hmm, he's telling me something about this function. He's saying this function is what? No, other way around. Above it? Yeah. So this running time is greater than or equal to some constant times n squared, or this amount of time that we take to do these resizes is bigger than some constant times n squared. So why am I telling you that? What am I saying to you? This is really slow. This is lousy, is what I'm saying. This is bad. So the type of asymptotic notation that I'm using is telling you the story. It's saying it's bigger than some constant times n squared. So now you know what the answer to the second question is. Because I'm telling you it's bigger than n squared, probably I'm pointing out to you that it's bad, that it's slow. If I was telling you big O, then, I would, then you would be able to say, well, maybe he's trying to tell me that that's good. Or he could be just lazy and forget about big omega. But I'm not lazy. I used big omega on purpose. Yeah. Well, I thought that if we, like, if we rewrite the, sum, the summation expression in closed form, I thought we'll get, we'll get like a polynomial whose highest order is 2. So wouldn't this be big O of n squared? Yes, it is big O of n squared. Oh. But that's not the story I want to tell. Oh. Big O would say it's less than or equal to some constant times n squared. That's not the point. Oh. A function like n is less than or equal to some constant times n squared. A function like log n is something like, I'm not saying that this is a good function. I'm saying this function is big. It's greater than or equal to some constant times n squared. And I'm trying to convince it's not you. faster than n squared. Correct. It's not faster than n squared. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. Wait, so I'm wondering that like the i three size pop, um, that just comes from like how much memory you have to like, right? Yeah, it's the size of the new array. I'm saying we got to do the whole. Yes, with my third lead. That's right. But don't we also have to like copy going down here? How much time is that going to take? If we do the wipe of the new array, and then I do a copy of the old array, what's the total cost going to be? So it's like c times i plus one plus c times i. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, so you want me to do that as well? well I, I know like at the end of both of them, but I'm just wondering. Actually, you know what I was thinking about? Maybe you're right. Maybe what it does is it wipes it all out, gives it to you, and then you copy into it. So <laughs> you're probably right. Maybe I should change this. But on the other hand, it doesn't matter. It's still going to be okay. Because it's just a factor of two. Yeah. And it's still big omega. In fact, it's worse. It's even bigger omega. No, it's big omega of n squared. But yeah, it's a good point. I kept thinking about it as, oh, I just copy in the stuff that I have, and then I'll fill up the rest with blanks. But I don't think the memory manager does that. I think it actually erases the whole thing, hands it over to you, and then you copy it in. So you're absolutely right. It's a good point. Any other questions, comments? Interesting things to say? Okay, so this is bad, so maybe the other one's good. Let's see. Well, if I do it times a cost, I mean, time's a constant. So let's suppose this is when c is equal to 2. We start off with the original size being 2, just to make our notation. Again, this is just to make us not have another parameter. So we just have one parameter c, one constant c. And then when we fill that up, we create a new array that's of size 4. And when we fill that one up, we create a new array which is of size Eight, and then we fill that one up with 16, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, great. How many resizes do we make if I push n things into the stack? How many resize operations do I make? This is like if I give you two to the 63 grains of rice, how many checkerboards would you have to visit before you would get to that many? Something like that, yeah. Log in. That's exactly right. It's the number of times you can double 2, for example, until you get to n, which is something like log n. So the number of resizes, I'll this down someplace. 
I wrote down log base C of N. I wrote the ceiling of that minus 1. The base is C because each time you're multiplying by this factor C. So if C is bigger, then you get there faster. Let one thing that you should get out of this class really quickly, very soon, is this property of law. If this wasn't comfortable to you, it will be by the end of the course. Or you're going to be in real trouble. So I encourage you to play with this to sort of see what happens when you multiply things by two, how quickly they grow, and realize that that really is the number of times that you double something is log base two when you want to get to some number n. Log base two of n is the number of times you double in order to get to, to n, starting from one. Okay, what's the i3 size cost? Uh, the i3 size is going to go from something that's like c to the i, to c to the i plus 1. So uh, probably it's going to be an i3 size cost of c to the i plus 1. Or if you want, c to the i plus 1 plus c to the i. Maybe. But I'm not going to do that because that would make things too complicated. Um, and so then the total resize cost is just the sum of all of this stuff. So it's the sum from i equals 1. Oops. 1 to log base C of N uh, minus 1 of the cost for doing the, I should draw a line here, yeah. well, the cost of doing that resize is C to the I plus 1, and we all know what that is. Uh, when you're doing a geometric series, this is the sum of a geometric series, then there's a formula for it, but basically what that formula says is the last term dominates. The biggest term in this thing is when I raise c to the log base c of n. That's the big one. And so this is big O of what? N. So in the amount of work we did for the resize when we resized by multiplying by a factor, the total amount of work we did in that resize is only order n, whereas the total amount that we did when we were adding was n squared. So, well, that's like extra overhead. This whole resize thing is extra overhead. We want to minimize that. And what this is saying is that we can get by with only order n additional work for putting n things into the stack. So another way to do that, another way to think about this is if we smeared that workout over all of the entries that we put into the stack. So if we shared the load among all of those entries, or we taxed each one of those entries enough to pay for this resize, every entry would only be taxed or charged once, or a constant number of times. The amount of work we do per insertion, per push, averaged over the entire running of the stack is constant. So this means that the amortized cost per push is order one. Amortized is like spread out over all of the operations, amortized over all the operations. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, uh, no the, what, I, what I did here was I just said, if I push into this stack n times, then I know that I pay a constant for every push. But in addition, I'm going to pay occasionally a huge amount to perform the resize. Yeah. But the sum of all of those resize costs over all of the n pushes is only order n. So if I look at that, that total cost for resizes and I 
I, I pay for it by thinking about the pushes themselves, then each push, if it paid a dollar every time I performed a push, I would have enough money to pay for all of my resize operations. It's just they come in batches, they come in chunks. And so occasionally it'll be like this, it's sort of like, it's sort of like in Java when you do a garbage collection. The garbage collection slows everything down because it's doing some work, a lot of work, all at once. But over the course of the entire execution of your program, that running time is minuscule. It's the same thing here. It's only a constant time per operation. Because I know that the total amount is order n. And I know that the number of operations is at least n in order to get that. Yep. Yep. I know that the number, the amount of work that I'm doing here is less than some constant times n. And so I'm saying if I average that over all of those n operations, at least n, there could be more because this is just saying if all you did was push stuff in, then we would get this. But you could push and pop, push and pop, push and pop, blah, 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 blah. There are at least n operations. Yep. So I guess to summarize, uh, this is way faster than plus, con uh, plus a constant because although each resize costs more, there's way less number of resizes, so therefore it's faster overall. There are not, each, um, each resize costs the same as what it was before. Oh, it's plus. just as, as plus. It's just there are more resizes happening with plus than there are with this. Right, so for plus, don't you have to like, uh, like allocate less memory per push per, per resize? Or is this like each time you might allocate? Actually, like, oh, um, you say have a test of the whole one, so it should be the same. Well, the way that I think about it is exactly the, sta the statement that you made. Each time I'm only adding a certain amount in the other one, I'm only adding 10 things each time, 10, 10, 10, which means I have to do a lot more of them. So I have to do this copy many times, whereas this is saying, I only have to do it when you've filled up what I've created. And I've created space, which is proportional to the number of things that are already in the, in the stack, which means, I sort of like the extra, the, the time that it takes me to, to make that new space, to resize the array, has basically already been paid for. Because there's already been at least that many, at least half that many things in my stack. Whereas with the, with the incremental resize, the one that just adds a little bit each time, then I'm getting many, many more resizes. They're not as big, they don't go to be as big, but I have to do it multiple times, which means I'm sort of recopying lots of things that I wouldn't have to recopy in this case. Yeah. Man, lots of things. Okay, well, let's go in this order. You. Yeah, fast. Like, so then do we like make it exponential and it'd be even more expansion, I guess? Ooh, yeah. Why don't we go up by like a, like a, I don't know, two to the two to the whatever. Yeah. Yeah, you could do that. Why would you not want to do that? Why wouldn't you want to make it just like, okay, let's go from zero to infinity. Okay. We'll start off with one, and then if you, then that's it. I'm up to infinity. Yeah, you use all your oh, you use all your memory, but what's really happening is, is you're allocating space that you may not use. This is saying I'm never going to allocate more than twice as much space as I'm going to use if I use a factor of two. Whereas if I go up by huge, huge factors, or not even huge, but just like I don't know, however how you want to go, then I risk wasting space which actually I have to pay for. I have to pay for that space because I have to initialize it, which means if I don't use it, then it's not going to give me this order one amortized cost because I don't have enough things. I haven't pushed enough things to pay for the resize that I've done. Like you say, okay, well, why don't you just go from one to a billion in just one fell swoop? Well, if only three things are pushed into the then those billion are not paid for. That, that's a lot of work for three operations. It's not no longer... Yes. Oh, great. This is great. Now, we're going this way. Also, basically... What do you call this resource, first of all? I don't know. 
I call it resize. Right, so for the this resize option, so so in general, the i resize cost is greater than the previous resize, but because we do far less number of resize, so that outweighs everything. Yeah, sort of like that. Oh. Mm -hmm. I still don't understand what you mean by how, how do the fishes like pay for the ultimate resize cost? Oh, uh, think of it this way. I uh, have a certain number of uh, elements in my stack. Let's call it, let's just talk about the first step. So I have two things in my stack when I perform a resize. I'm resizing by basically two. Now I have four things in my stack. I'm resizing by basically four. So when I do, when I fill up the next level, I put in five, six, seven, eight, I'm paying for the resize cost to go for, to the next level. Because I've put in four additional things, it's within a constant factor of how much I have to expand the array to get to the next level. So you, you put in, what do you have to do? After one, two, three, four? No, it's five, six, seven, eight. Like, I get to this point, five, six, seven, eight. I put in four things, and now I have to do an amount of work which is like, well, okay, four times that, 16, to make a new array. But each time, the amount of work that I have to do is only a constant times the number of things that I had to put in in order to make that fill up. So I think about those as paying for it. Okay, you don't like that? I got another way. Everybody's gonna get put into a stack, okay? And you gotta bring along some money. Because occasionally, I'm gonna ask you to resize and you have to pay for that. How much money would you bring? Don't worry, you're all friends. So you're gonna figure this whole thing out so nobody is like saying, he's paying for everything. No, it's everybody is paying equal amount. How much money would you bring? Dollar per operation. I bring four dollars. I mean, here I am. I'm number six. I show up. And number seven shows up, and number eight shows up, and I say, uh oh, five, six, no, it's five, six, five, seven, and eight. We've got to pay for the resize. The resize costs 16. Let's take our four dollars, pull it together, pay for the resize, we're all done. And you say, well, wait a minute, that only works for five, six, seven, eight. No. Now, suppose we get to the next level. We have nine, 10, 11, 12, all the way up to 16, right? How many of them are there? Eight. Four dollars per person. $32. $32? That's exactly what we need to resize this size 32. $4. Perfect. Everybody brings $4. Well, why the first time people make the cost? Oh, they already paid. They don't have their $4 anymore. Oh. Right? I mean, they had to pay. One and two had to pay. Well, maybe they didn't have to pay at all. But three and four, they had to pay to go from four to eight. Uh, yeah, so that makes sense. How does the pain when you how does paying money transfer to running time? Yeah. yeah, so this instead of paying money to resize the array, think of it as the time that's allowed to do the resize. That time is money. And the time is being paid for by the elements that are put into the array. Which means that it's proportional to the number of elements that are put in the array if everybody has brought the same amount of money, $4. So what that means is that the amount of work that I do over the course of the entire algorithm for resizing is four times the number of people that are in the queue. Four times the number of things in the queue. Or in the, in the stack, sorry. So that's it. We're good. Everybody amortized pays order one, four. You, um, you do have a huge uh, original type. Be a long time, long time. 
If I start with a huge, big, giant stack, empty array, say 10 or 100 or 1,000, something like that, and I don't use it, then wouldn't that affect this? Wouldn't that be something else? Wouldn't that anytime not be order one? Oh, yeah, yeah, I would waste memory. But it's a constant amount, because that's a constant independent of the amount that I'm using. Right, it's like 100 is what's written in your code for the initial size of the, of the stack. 100 is a constant. It's not dependent on how many things, how, how, how big the, the stack becomes, the size of the stack that somebody's using. No, 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 no. 100, it has to get to twice the size. Yeah. Like, so, so, okay, now there's another 100 people, and they can pay. They pay for making it now, instead of 200, it becomes 400. Well, wow, that's $4 per person. How did they get the $4? Okay. <laughs> they just brought it. It's really just a mechanism for thinking about how to charge the time that's being done for these operations to the actual elements in the stack. It's just a charging scheme. And the only reason that I'm using that as a way of thinking about the running time is because it makes it clear that the total cost in terms of the running time for this whole process is then proportional to some constant times the number of elements that are in the stack. That's what's so cool, is that amortized, the cost is constant per person, per thing in the stack. Don't be distressed that we spend a lot of time on this. I mean, I don't know if you are distressed. I'm slightly distressed, but I'm not that distressed. And I'll tell you why. Amortized analysis is not trivial. This is the, maybe the first taste that you've had of amortized analysis. It's not a trivial thing to do, but on the other hand, it's a great thing to do in this course. It's a great thing to understand. Another way of analyzing algorithms. Okay. Excellent. Stack summary. Link list implementation. Constant time push, constant time pop. None of this amortized business. Nothing. Just constant. Array implementation. Constant time pop, constant time push, most of the time, until it fills up. And then... You have to resize. So over n pushes, it's order n, or average of order 1 per push. Great. But why should we use an array if we have this sort of, you know, it's kind of occasionally resized. Eh, yuck. Why would we use an array as opposed to a linked list? Linked lists are nice. Constant time per operation, period. No amortized mumbo jumbo. This is really a question. I'm asking you. Why do we use an array? Yes. Quicker to access elements. Is that true? How much time does it take to access an element using a linked list in our implementation of a stack using a linked list? No. How much time do we pay per operation for the linked list implementation? Constant. Nope. Not running time. Or maybe running time, but not that easily running time. Why would we use an array? <laughs> is there anything special about array memory? Is there anything special about linked list memory? Yeah. We have less memory storage because the node list we have to keep the focus memory. Yes. Why use an array? Less memory. No pointers. Only data. Any other reasons we would want to use an array over you? Um, I think the arrays are static, whereas it's just dynamic. So? Um, I like dynamic stuff. If you can do it, the compiler can choose the array <coughs> and the allocation of memory, whereas you have to do it if there's a one time to do the Ah, okay. So the comment was something like the dynamic allocation of memory for the linked list is somehow making things not as nice for the computer. 
Can you be more precise about what not nice is? Like what exactly is not nice about allocating dynamically memory hither and yon? Yes. Claim is dynamic memory, heap memory is more expensive than normal memory. I don't believe that that's true. Also slower. I don't believe that that's true. I don't believe that that's true. In general, no. It's all the same memory. It all gets paged into your, you know, your L1 cache eventually. It comes through L3, L2, L1, there it is. Boom, it's there. Just memory. No, but what's interesting about arrays versus these linked list things that are dynamically allocated? What's so what's weird about them? Linked list. Why is it why you're right. There's something weird about it, but what is it? There's one word I'm list I'm I'm waiting for. It's one word. You have one word? You have two words. Okay, two words. No oh, many words. Use as many as Ooh, and why would that be bad? The linked list memory is not contiguous in memory. Why would that be bad? Oh, you are so good up until that. Um, you might want to store something big, and it would be in chunks. That's true. So it is true that by allocating little linked list nodes all over the place, you might have fragmented your memory horribly. But, I'm, but you don't care because you're selfish. And it's your machine, for goodness sake. So who cares what other people are experiencing? Even you would not be happy by having this fragmented memory all over the place. Why? What is the thing that goes on? What is the word that I'm looking for? Do you know about how computers work? I gave you a hint. L1, L2, L3 cache? Cache levels? How, does ca how do caches work? I'll tell you. That's what's so great about this course. We get to talk about everything. The way that caches work is they bring in a chunk of memory, contiguous memory, from the next level of the memory hierarchy. So like, for example, if you don't have enough memory in your machine, then it gets paged out to disk. Very slow to get memory from disk. You go out there, you grab some memory off the disk, you page it into your cache, page it into your memory, page it into your L3 cache, or your L2 cache, or your L1 cache. You bring it in there, and it's a chunk of memory that's contiguous. If you if you've allocated linked list nodes, all over your memory space in not consecutive order, not contiguous chunks, how many linked list nodes are you going to get when you grab a contiguous chunk of memory? A few, but you'll get a lot more if they're allocated in an array. So that's the reason, is cache performance. This is contiguous memory. Arrays are contiguous. memory. Can you read that? It says contiguous memory. Arrays are contiguous memory. Arrays are contiguous memory. And perform well with caching. So if you have a huge stack, you bring in a block of memory into your cache to work on, you will get a large part of that stack to work with. And you can pop stuff off for a long time before you get a page fault or a cache fault and have to bring something else back in. And so it's cache memory that's called. Okay, I can't believe that we didn't get to queues, but there, we got to queues. This is what we're going to talk about next time. We'll talk about it. It'll be very, very quick because I have to catch up.